Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today what I thought we would do is go through the process that I um, used for making the little AV um, amplifier board for the Atari 2600 uh, computer. This is what we're going to use to do the AV mod on a, um, another Atari 2600 Junior. This is exactly the same as the uh, little board I built for the one that I uh, forgot to film. So as soon as we're doing another one, I'd actually go through the process I use of um, knocking this little amplifier board up. There's nothing new or fancy with this. I mean, you can buy these ready-built online. Um, there's various different versions and configurations of it. This is just what I prefer to use. You can't just, don't just have to use this on the Atari 2600. It can be used on various different consoles and... Anywhere really that you just need to boost the um, composite level that's coming out of the actual computer up to uh, what your monitor is going to uh, accept. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, get on with this thing. Right, I think you can see what we've got, uh, what we've got here to make this with. Um, what we've got is we've got a few, uh, a little bit of um, Vera board here. Just a little bit of um, strip board. This is the copper strip board with the um, copper strips running down. You can see it like that, and it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it's six, um, six strips along. I don't know if that's focusing very well, but six strips along, and it's what about an inch, an inch by about just under three quarters of an inch. Like I said, it's only a tiny little bit. You can make it with smaller board, but I thought I'd use a bigger piece like this just to make it a little um, easy for everyone to see. And it doesn't really matter when it's inside the uh, console how big it is, providing it'll fit. Um, but yeah, so we've got a little piece of um, strip board there. We've got uh, four connecting wires to go to the actual console. Um, Colours I've picked are what I like to um, stick with with stuff like this. So we've got a white for audio, we've got yellow for the video signal, we've got red for plus five volts, and we've got obviously black for ground. Um, we also have a cable to go on the other side, so we've got three um, phono connections there, um, RCA jacks I believe um, you call them in America, um, and all this is is I buy the like three meter long RCA leads and I just cut them in half. Uh, only thing you have to be a bit careful of is sometimes the colour codes on them um, aren't exactly standard, like on this one, um, what I actually found out was the blue wire there is actually connected to the uh, the yellow plug on that side so you have to just go through them with a meter once you've chopped them off or trace it down from one end and just make sure you uh, link the two the white and the uh, red together like that for your um, audio because obviously these consoles only output a mono audio signal so you just link the two together to give you a dual mono then you've got your um, composite video output and obviously your ground connected together there so we've got that ready Component wise, all we've got is we've got um, a transistor. So I usually use a 2N2222. I've actually run out of them. Um, that is a 2N3904, which is virtually the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Any small MPN signal transistor should work fine for this. So that'll work just as well. We've got a uh, 220 UF capacitor. We've got a 75 ohm resistor, we've got a 2.2k resistor and we've got a 3.3k resistor. And we've got a little bit of heat shrink for the end. This is actually a little bit bigger. I've run out of the um, size of heat shrink I usually use for this. So we'll just have to see what we can do with that um, bigger part there. But again, you could use insulation tape or anything for that um, part of this. So, oh and then we have, uh, we have the circuit in question that which we are um, going to build. Let's try and hold that there for you. Is that in focus? It's as in focus as I can get on this crappy camera. Uh, but you can see if anyone wants to um, work off this, it's quite simple. It's quite easy for you to um, make that. So, without further ado, let's uh, get started. What I'll do first is, um, in fact, first thing I'll do is just mount the um, capacitor. Uh, these, that is actually slightly bigger size wise than um, most capacitors we use. It's just I've got a load of these in stock and I want to use them up so uh, that's why it's a slightly bigger capacitor than um, you'd normally see on a board like this. So let's just uh, I'll just use a pair of pliers just to bend the legs on that. It's always better to do it like this. This is the uh, like the approved method of um, 
of doing the legs on the capacitor. There we go. So we've got negative to positive. Oops, I've just dropped the capacitor just uh just bear with me one second please. Because I've just dropped the damn thing. There we go. Ah, found it. Right, so uh, first things first, let's mount the um, capacitor on the board. And what we want is we want the negative towards this side. So what we do is we pop the capacitor. In fact, I think we need it about there, don't we? Yeah, so we pop. Uh, do we need it about there? Do we need it? Do we need it about there? So let's pop the capacitor um, in the board like that. We'll just give the legs a little bend out just to um, hold them in position. Put it over. Oh, I've forgotten one very important um, process before we even get this further. What we need to do, because this board's um, been in my um, cupboard for a little while, is just give the board a bit of a clean, a little bit of um, emery paper, just so it'll, uh, so the solder will stick a little bit better. Because the um, copper tarnishes a little bit. If you don't do this, you're uh, you have to rely more on the flux to get a good idea, addition to the uh, tracks. So uh, it is as well, especially if you've had this board lying round for a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a clean with some emery cloth like that, just to uh, make it so it make it so it fits. So let's uh, get back to where we was going. Let's put that capacitor on the board, and we'll just fix that down. Let's see if you can um, see me doing this. It is quite tricky to do this on a camera. I must, uh, I must admit, I'm not used to working with the camera quite where I've got it here. But we'll uh, see what we can do. That's the first connection. And giving the board that little bit of a clean really does make this a little bit easier. Okay. The next connection. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the capacitor mounted on the board. You can see. We're just going to snip them two legs off now. So let's just get rid of them. And they've shot off across my um, across my room, never to be seen again. Right. So that's the capacitor mounted in position. And next, I think we will mount the uh, transistor. Now, what we need to do is the um, the transistor. Basically, this. I mean, it does change between different capacitors, but um, this is exactly the same pinout as a um, 2N2222. So, what we've got is um, this way on. We've got emitter, base, and then collector that way on. So, it's emitter, base, and collector, with the front of the capacitor facing towards you. And what we need is that capacitor that we've um, just fitted on the um, board. We need the emitter of that capacitor, sorry, the emitter of that transistor to um, connect up with the positive leg of that capacitor there. So we can just stick the transistor in like that. So if you can see, we said it's um, emitter, base, and collector. So that first leg there, the emitter leg is in there on the same rail basically on the same uh, track going down as uh, the positive leg of that capacitor so we will solder that in position next let me just uh, get this steady I need to get some of them little helping hands or something that um, everyone seems to use I've seen, uh, have you ever watched BigClive.com um, soldering? He kind of holds it all and solders with one hand like that. I've tried as my might to try and uh, replicate that, but I just can't do it. So, uh, what we will do, and we can probably use my, uh, yeah, that works. We just need something like that just to hold it in, oops, let's put that more better, better in shot. Just to hold it while we uh, solder. So I should really get something better to hold my uh, to hold my boards while I uh, do things like this, and then we'll just come in here, tiny bit of solder on there, tiny bit of solder on there, and a tiny bit of solder on there, like that. 
and again we can just um, snip them snip them off now so that is the um, transistor mounted and that is the capacitor mounted and so the capacitor, I've, a lot of other um, designs I've seen of this don't actually use that capacitor but um, I like to um, I like to add that capacitor. Next thing um, we will do is um, we will add the 75 ohm resistor, which basically goes between the plus of the capacitor and ground. And what we're going to use for ground is we're going to use that leg there that's between the two legs of the capacitor. So if we turn that round, if you can see there, the two legs of the capacitor with the transistor um, soldered on, and between them there's currently an unused length there and that is what we're going to use to connect the excuse me to connect the um, ground line so what we will do is we'll take the 75 ohm resistor and we will bend one leg of it down like that so it stands upright and that will go in there like that and we'll just push him home and it doesn't matter that them two legs there are touching because them two actually touch they're actually going to be soldered together in a second so we turn it back over again just make, fortunately I think this should hold itself in position quite well while we solder it anyway let's bring that back over there and we will solder this into position That's that one done. And that's that one done. I'll pass a touch bar on that. There we go. So that's the first resistor connected. We can snip that off. Like that. So that's a 75 ohm resistor there. Next, I think we will connect the 2.2K resistor. And the 2.2K, should we do the 2.2? No, in fact, we'll do the 3.3K resistor next. And that goes between the base, which is the center of the transistor, and ground. So we're going to put that one where we're going to fit you. What we might do, yeah, I think what we're going to do, this is the, uh, the 3.3K resistor, is we'll just lift up the... Uh, We'll just lift up the uh, capacitor and we're going to mount that underneath where the capacitor is. So we're going to go off that line there, which is the ground line, sorry, which is the um, base of the transistor, which is the centre pin on the transistor. So we've gone on the same track. Remember, this is all strip track on there. And then we're going to come across to where the ground connection is. Let's just bend that capacitor out of the way for now. So I use various different shapes and sizes when I'm uh, doing this. Um, I've made this on absolutely tiny boards before now or like this is a bit of a bigger board but we can mount that there like that and it doesn't cause a problem with having the capacitor um, over the top of it. We will just solder that in position now. I'll just uh, straighten the legs out a bit make it easier to solder. so I can use it to hold the board in position. There we go. And again we just need to chop the legs off that. that's that one in position where I've got one more uh, resistor to fit and that goes from again the base under there up to 5 volts now 5 volts needs to go to the collector on the transistor so remember we've got emitter base and this last leg there is the collector so that takes the uh, 5 volts so this is nice and easy all we need to do is run another resistor basically across them too so it goes between a collector and base 
So this is the 2.2K uh, resistor and we do what we did before, we bend that bend that up like that so obviously um, as anyone knows it doesn't matter which way around you put a resistor they're not uh, polarized like some capacitors are so it doesn't matter which way around that goes as you can see I put the uh, put the resistor in like that and we just need to solder this in position again so I'll just put that there where I can uh, where I can get to it Oops. and kick the tripod That's that one connected this one let's just go in here and that's that one soldered so again let's just inspect our work yeah I'm happy with that Snip these off. Right, next thing we're going to do is connect the uh, connecting wires. Now, if you can see on the strip here, that one at the end has nothing connected to, to it yet, and that's going to be where uh, we pass the audio through. The next wire along is actually going to be our 5 volts. The next one along is going to be our, which is on the uh, base there is going to be our input from the um, computer, that's going to be the video input signal and then we've got the um, ground a little bit further on under there so we're going to connect them wires up next and I think we will start with white which is going to be the audio so we take the white wire, I've already um, stripped it put that through the first hole like that Hopefully we can get this to um, hold in position while we uh, solder this wire in place. Let's hold that there. Let's see if we can get this to uh, solder in position. Oops, it's moving. There we go. That's the... Uh, first wire soldered in place, that's our um, audio input. Next I think we need to put the um, the power in, which is to the next pin along. That one goes in there like that. There we go, that's that one done. That's in there, that's them two done. Then we need the video input. Now the video input goes on the next pin along, which actually goes to the base of the uh, transistor. So let's put that one in. That's dropped out. Let's just uh, stick that back in where it's got to go. Oops. Let's spin that round. Yeah, I think I'll definitely invest in some of them little hand helping hands or something. Enough there. There we go. So that's the uh, the video connected. And all we've got to do now is the ground, which is the last one here. If I can pick it up, so we've just got the ground wire to go in, and that just connects between um, basically the two legs of that capacitor there as we saw before 
we left a, uh, a gap between the uh, capacitor legs when we soldered it in position which is right there so that is the uh, ground wire we'll hold that in position while we solder it in you can't see that on sh oh yes you can you can see that on the shot and that's that one connected most of them are quite low but that one we can just uh, snip a little bit of excess off there there we go so that is, uh, that's that side of um, it all wired up and all we need to do now is um, add the RCA jacks to the other end which is basically that side of that capacitor is your video output so that wire goes in there the ground is its, ne its next door neighbour so we can put that in at the same time which because there's three grounds already soldered together and I've already pre-tinned this uh, wire just to make life a little bit easier if I can get it to go in the hole now so we'll try putting the ground in first scene it's a little bit thicker because it's got three uh, three wires going into it yeah there we go that's going through right so yeah that's the uh, that's the ground wire in and we'll just solder that oops that's really is rather blurry let me get that down there where we can see it that's the uh, that's the ground wire connected there so we'll just solder that into position Okay, there we go, we'll snip off the excess there, we'll connect the video next, which is it's, uh, if, uh, yeah, shall we connect the video next, I think that's going to be the next easiest one to get in, that is in like that, bend that that way, now, what I will say is this cheap wire is not the nicest to solder, it, uh, it does take a little bit of flux and uh, takes a while for it to tin nicely, but the cheap and once they're actually uh, soldered in position they're perfectly acceptable there we go that's that one uh, connected we can just snip the excess off that and that's happy and then all we've got to do is connect the uh, two there which I've twisted together which are the audio and they go to the last last track on this side like that just get this bend it round and push them home I always get one which has been a pain I'll just run the solder iron down it perhaps just uh, straighten out the solder on it there we go I think there was just a little bit too much solder on that to get it through the uh, to get it through the hole. Let's try again. Now I've taken a little bit of solder off. There we go. Oops. Through and solder that into position. There we go. So that's connected. Yep, we're happy with that. So basically, that's it. That's the uh, that's the AV mod made. Now, what we're going to just do. Now, I don't normally use this size of um, heat shrink. I usually use something a little bit smaller, but I've uh, I've run out of it so uh, this will have to do and all this is to do is really just to protect it and stop anything shorting out on um, 
the board we've just made so all I do is if I shove the board inside a bit of heat shrink like that and we'll just shrink that down just to protect everything I'm just using a, um, a hot air gun here but you could uh, equally do this with a lighter if you're careful so obviously it's a bit easier if you've got the uh, got a hot air rework station like this just spin that over get a bit on the back but you really could have done with a uh, slightly smaller um, heat shrink than this one but it does the job there we go that's all you need and there is our AV mod ready for fitting to a um, another Atari 2600 like I said you can use this on various consoles where you just need to amplify the um, video output before it goes to a uh, monitor so uh, I hope you found that useful um, instead I'll just show you the circuit again that I use so I don't know whether it's the best circuit in the world but it's always worked quite well for me so um, I thought I would uh, share it there so it's not my circuit it's just one I've got off the web the only thing is that I generally add that 220 UF capacitor which I've not seen all the ones um, on the web um, use that so anyway I'm gonna leave it at that um, hopefully I'll be putting a part two out to this uh, fairly soon showing me um, actually doing the AV mod to the um, 2600 junior so um, I'll leave it at that for now thanks for watching and uh, goodbye